Welcome back, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you, Angela. Thank you for coming on this morning. And you have a booth at Montage Marketplace? Yes. And so uh, if people were going to go by Montage, what would they see in your booth? Um, I have a lot of antiques and um, a little bit of everything. I like vintage furniture mm -hmm. and home accessories and things like that. So you're going to show us today how to repurpose furniture. You have some finished products down there, but where would you find pieces like this if you wanted to make have a project? You can really find a piece like this anywhere. You could go to a resale shop. Um, sometimes there are unfinished pieces at Montage that you could buy. Mm -hmm. um, also, if a yard sale, estate sale, anywhere like that. Okay, cool. So those down there are samples of what you've done, and mm -hmm. you've awesomely give, brought us pieces of wood that are going to show us how to sort of distress the wood in the process. So why don't we start down here, and you're going to tell us what to do. Okay, the first step, you're going to go out and pick a piece of furniture, and this is just going to represent our furniture today. Okay. And you can either have... Um, an unfinished piece of furniture or a stained piece of furniture and the great thing about this chalk paint that I'm going to show you how to make mm -hmm. is that you can put it on a piece of furniture that has blemishes or stains or anything like that. Okay. And you don't have to prepare the surface, you just start painting. And you bought this chalk paint? This is not the chalk paint, we're oh. going to make the chalk oh, paint. Oh, okay, okay. But you can buy chalk paint. Okay, this is just a regular um, paint that you would get at your local home improvement oh, okay. store. And the first step is to pick, you're going to pick two colors, and so you'll just take that and paint, and it, paint on. it on. Mm -hmm. So then later on, this is going to show through when this is distressed. This yes. is going to be the distressed base color. Yes. So what would you suggest you use as a base color, like a dark color, or you always want to do light, or just up to you? You can do at your discretion. either one. <laughs> you can just pick two colors that you like together, mm -hmm. two complementary colors. Cool. So then when that's dry... I love painting. <laughs> okay, so the next step, when that's dry, um, mm -hmm. you can use... I like to use a bar of soap. Okay. But you could either use a candle or a Vaseline, but I just think the soap is... Um, it's easier to handle and it's, it's neater and cleaner. Okay. So then you're going to go around the edge of your furniture. Okay, and why are we doing this? This is going to repel the second color of paint and it's going to help it oh. uh, make it easier to um, when you get to the sanding stage. So if we look at the finished pieces they have the, the mm -hmm. edges are a little bit shining through and it's because you put the soap on. Mm -hmm. And you can put it in, you know, you can put oh, it on the edge. Oh, so interesting. Yes, and I like to put it, you know, where there would be natural wear on the furniture, oh, around okay. the handles or the edges. Cool. Okay, the next step is to make the homemade chalk paint. Ooh. And you can buy your own chalk paint that's already pre-mixed, mm -hmm. but it's pretty expensive, so this is just an inexpensive way to do it. And why chalk paint? Is there a reason? It's called chalk paint because it has a chalky finish to okay. it, and um, it just makes it easier to sand off. Okay. Okay, so your first step is you're going to pour the paint. I've got 10 ounces of paint here. And this you just bought at like a Lowe's or mm -hmm. a Home Depot type thing? Yes. And they have these great little sample bottles, and you can just pick any color. I like to use the little ones because they have the screw on top. Easier to handle. And it's easier to handle. And Not then, the pry off. Yeah, and they're inexpensive. <laughs> and you can also use the mist tinted paint. You go to that section where the paint's been mixed wrong, and you can get some really good bargains. There I love section. this color. Yes, this is um, actually emerald green, and it's the color of the year this year. Ooh. So your next step, that was 10 ounces of paint. You're going to put four tablespoons of plaster of Paris. And this is, comes in this container yes, right here. Yes, and you can get this also at your local home okay. improvement store. And then two tablespoons of water. Okay. Okay, then you're going to mix that. And you have to mix it up really good. And so this plaster is giving it that chalky? Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, when you mix Ooh. it, you just make sure you get all of your chunks. And it gets a little bit thicker. and Yeah, it's about, when you get finished, it's going to be about the consistency of pudding. Mm, don't eat it, though. Yeah, don't eat it. <laughs> okay, so. Get that all mixed up. So that's up. all mixed, yep. Yep. And then you're going to go over. Oh, so this is our piece. Mm -hmm, We've soaked is, it. It's ready. Yes. And then you paint on there. Oh my gosh, I love crafts. <laughs> so this is going to go on, and mm -hmm. just a simple one layer? Yeah, and you don't really have to be that um, neat with it. You can just glop it on, it's fine. Such a beautiful color. Yep. And, then, and so now, what, what's the next step? Okay, the next step is the sanding step. Now, this is what it looks like when it's dry, and then you're going to use um, sandpaper. I like to use a really coarse sandpaper. This mm -hmm. is a 60 grit, and it just has a better tooth on it so it'll help 
sand off. So. And just go right in. And so mm -hmm. those edges that I that you put soap on are going to come mm -hmm. off easier. It's going to come off easier. See how the the yellow is showing through there? Yeah, that's awesome. So easy. Mm -hmm. It does. It really. I'm makes probably it not easier. doing a very good job, but <laughs> the concept. Mm -hmm. And why don't we go to the next one okay. where you've done? Because I'm not. I'm. I'm not <laughs> focusing on it that much. So I want to see okay, yours. Okay. So when you're finished. It'll look like this. So cool. And then there's only one more step. And that's the, the last step is to put a wax on it. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give it um, a nice sheen and sort of seal oh, the Oh, yeah, paint. I can see that. So you just get a bath cloth, get a nice big glop of wax. And then so cool. you just rub it in. And that sort of brings the color out. And, and and I want to get a shot of the furniture that you have done. If we can go down there, Clay, and get a shot of them. Because these are so cool, but the finished, the finished product mm -hmm. is really where it shines. And you can see why the distressing is such a great um, quality. And so what color were these pieces when you first picked them up? They were just um, kind of a stained wood color. Okay. This green one had um, scratches all over the top. It had rings where people would put glasses down. Yeah. So. Well, it makes them, it really dresses them up mm -hmm. from just being like sort of a factory piece yeah. to this, this is so cute and you can change the colors for whatever room. Mm -hmm. And Angela, thank you so much for coming on here. We're going to close the show out with you. We'll get Jonathan in here if he has any questions. Um, and you, this is awesome. We're going to have to get you back on here okay. to do another project with us.